Hi everyone, I'm Zem. Welcome or welcome back to my channel. My New Year's resolution for 2023 is to be more consistent on this channel. So let's hope <laughs> that I can stick to that. I decided that it'd be sensible to start off the New Year, New Me type of situation on my channel with the video talking about my most anticipated releases for this year. So here I am. Starting with January, naturally. <laughs> on the 10th, we have Emily Wilde's Encyclopedia of Fairies. Emily Wilde is a professor at Cambridge who studies fairies and is writing the first encyclopedia about them. She's not very good at people skills, so when she comes to this small remote village for her research, she doesn't care about talking or communicating with the locals, and she really doesn't care about her attractive academic rival called Wendell Bumblebee. For some reason, some of the elements of the synopsis reminded me of The House in the Cerulean Sea, one of my favorite books of all time, and I'm expecting Emily to come to that place, you know, for work, but I hope that she will find so much more than that. Another book that is coming out the same day is Hellbent by Lee Bardugo. To be honest, I didn't really care about The Ninth House. The only thing I cared about is whether Darlington is okay. <laughs> so I definitely will be reading this book, but I need to reread the first one first. Moving on to January 17th, and what we have here is How to Sell a Haunted House by Grady Hendrix. Last year, I read My Best Friend's Exorcism and The Southern Book Club's Guide to Slaughtering Vampires by him, and I loved it both of them. So now I'm really excited about any of his books. This story tells us about Louise and Mark who are siblings and they are not on speaking terms, they haven't seen each other in a while, but after their parents' death they have to work together to sell their parents' house and, you know, get the money that they need. But the weird thing is all the mirrors in the house are covered with newspapers and also the door to the attic is bolted shut. January 19th and we have God Killer here. Kisen is an assassin, a god slayer. She enjoys doing that and she's good at it until she meets a god that she cannot kill. I'm probably butchering this, but his name is Skediseth and he is a god of white lies. And he is found to be accompanying a little runaway. We're also following Elogast, who fought in the God War and who cleared the city of thousands of altars. Now all he wants is to retire and finally get some rest. However, his plans are ruined when the king sends him on a secret mission. And something tells me that he and Kissen and this Skediseth god will cross their paths. On the very last day of January, Chain of Thorns is supposed to come out. This is the third book in the Last Hours trilogy by Cassandra Clare. I'm really curious what she came up with this time because the last book was wild. Moving on to February and on the 14th we have The Last Tale of the Flower Bride by Roshni Chakshi. A man who believed in fairy tales marries a beautiful, mysterious, rich woman called Indigo. She promised to love him forever if he promises back that he's never going to ask her about her past. When Indigo's aunt dies, they have to move back to her childhood home and he has to come face to face with the secrets of her past and with her friend Azure who went missing but seems to be haunting corners of that house. Also, Goodreads says that sometime in February, Heart Supper Volume 5 should be released. I'm not sure though, but really looking forward to it. On March the 7th, almost my birthday, we have The Adventures of Amina al Sarafi. Amina is a notoriously famous pirate who is finally ready to give up her career and think about retirement. In the words of my favorite Blackbeard, the fuck is that? What the fuck is that? However, her ex-crewmate's daughter is kidnapped and she is asked to help him find her. On a paid basis, of course. Naturally, Amina cannot miss the opportunity to go on one last adventure with her crew. But the farther she goes, the more she understands that there's something else going on than she thought at the beginning. March 21st, The Witch and the Vampire, which supposedly is a queer retelling of Rapunzel. Ava and Kai are witches and also best friends but then their city is attacked by vampires and everything changes for them. Ava is kept inside her house by her shady mom, <laughs> and one day she decides to escape to the forest. Meanwhile, Kai is studying to be a witch and a protector of her city from the vampire threat, and also Ava is kind of a threat as well by being a vampire. So she decides to follow her into the forest, 
pretending that she's going to help but actually leading her to the authorities. However, the dangers that are waiting for them in this forest change all of their plans. On April 18th, we have The Fiancé Farce by Alexandria Belfleur. Tansy Adams is a small bookshop owner, which is, you know, barely hanging on. She doesn't have a romantic relationship, which of course is not fine by her family. And when she's finally fed up with questions like, why are you still single? She says that she does have a girlfriend and shows them a photo of a girl from a book cover. You know, the possibility of actually meeting this girl is very low, or is it? Gemma, the girl from that book cover, is a wild child and an heiress to a publishing business. However, she can only become a full-blown owner if she settles down and gets married. When she finds out about Tansy and her little lie, she decides to play along and publicly announces their engagement. April 25th marks the release of In the Lives of Puppets by TJ Klune. In a weird little treehouse lives a family of three robots and a man called Victor. One day he finds and repairs an android called Hap, who happens to know one of his androids called Giovanni. Apparently, in the past, they used to hunt people together. This hap guy accidentally alerts the wrong people who come and take Giovanni to, I don't know, disassemble him or reprogram him. So now Victor and his family have to go on an adventure to save their friend. Moving on to May and on the 16th we have Fake Dates and Mooncakes. The synopsis of this book says that it's a combination of Heartstopper and Crazy Rich Asians, which is weirdly intriguing. Dylan works at his aunt's Chinese restaurant and really wants to take part and also win <laughs> in the competition of making, baking uh, mooncakes and thus promoting the restaurant. Theo is a returning customer, a very handsome and charming young man who also happens to be rich and somehow he convinces Dylan to go to a wedding with him, not their wedding, <laughs> and pretend to be his boyfriend. So now Dylan will have to come face to face with a glamorous yet cruel world of rich people. Oh my god, this is not a drill. On July 25th, we will finally get the sixth installment of the Red Rising Saga by Pierce Brown, which is called The Lightbringer, and I'm super excited about it, but I also don't remember anything, so I will have to reread the whole series in preparation for July, but it's worth it. In the end of August, more specifically on the 29th, we have the continuation of The Iron Widow by Ziran J. Zhao, which is called The Heavenly Tyrant. I have a love-hate relationship with the first book, but I love the ending and it was intriguing enough for me to wait for the second book, so yeah, I guess I'll be waiting. <laughs> and another book that comes out on the same day is called Jara. What grabbed my attention in this synopsis is the fact that supposedly it's a mix of Sailor Moon and the Lunar Chronicles, Jin Jara lives in the world where magic is banned, but she herself has a magical gift and she tries to, you know, keep it under control. An unexpected meeting with a guy called Han reveals her secret of a magical society, magical organization, which is called the Guardians of Dawn, and she has to become a part of it to try to save people from a virus that turns them into monsters. For some reason, there's never any information about the releases coming after August, at least at the beginning of the year, so <laughs> that's all I've got. Tell me what books you are anticipating this year in the comment section down below, and should I be excited about them too? Thank you so much for watching this video, and I hope to see you in the next one. Bye.